This video is a follow-up to the photo that I posted on Line Stows last week in the Sigma Tandem Instructor Educational Resource page. I'm going to go ahead and do the Line Stows here. This is a Micro Sigma with a 340, a SG2 340 main canopy, and it's uh, going to be closed with large sport bands. I'm going to start with the left inboard locking stow. I'm going to double wrap all of my locking stows and kind of talk through it as I do. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my first bite of line. First bite of line is two to four inches. I'm going to wrap the rubber band stow around the line group and my thumb. Do it a second time. As I remove my thumb, I'm going to grip the bite of line and compress it gently so that it is flat and smooth. The reason I'm doing this is that the stow is designed this way. The reason the bite of line is stowed uh, in the first place is to prevent the line stows from falling out as the bag and the line separate during the liftoff of the bag. This is a stopping a separation in this direction. When it comes time for this stow to release this bite of line, it's going to go in this direction. The bag's going to gently rotate or oscillate ever so slightly. So what I'm looking for is prevention of release in this direction, which is what this stow prevents, this bite of line and stow prevent. But I'm looking for smooth release in this direction when it's time for that line to release. That's why these smooth line stows are so important rather than just letting the line bite mushroom out or explode out on the exterior of the stow. So that's why I'm targeting this smooth bite of line. So I do the same thing on the other side. Create my bite of line, wrap it around my thumb and the bite of line, and as I release, release my thumb from the bite, I'm going to grip the other side of the, the line stow and gently just press it into that smooth position. Two nice clean double wrapped line stows that will prevent premature release in this direction, but they will assist and aid in smooth release as each of those line stows pays out during the normal deployment. Okay, moving on to the outboard locking stows. Same thing gonna happen here. I create my bite of line, and I want the bite really no longer than the edge of the bag. I do not want the bite of line to flop over the side of the bag. There's my clean bite. My double wrap, my thumb is between the double wrap and the bite of line. I'm going to gently pinch and squeeze that bite while I remove my thumb and I get a nice clean bite of line just to the side of the bag. Same thing on the other side. I take my bite of line at the end of the bag, I create that bite length with my thumb, I pinch or grip the bite of line outside of the stow as I gently remove my thumb from that stow band. Now I've got four clean stows that will protect the bag and protect the canopy and line set on liftoff, but when it comes to their point in time to release, they will pay out smoothly one after the other. Let's bring the bag further down to our outboard line stows. Again, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to make my first bite of line at the end of the bag. And you see here, this is okay. We have one line or a couple lines longer than the others. This is really no different than lane one versus lane eight of a racetrack. The outboard uh, line groups are gonna be 
longer and they're going to take up more space than the inboard ones. And where you have cascades on the other end of that, there's really nowhere for it to go. So you have one of two options. We can either find that line and pull it out, smoothen it out, or we simply gently continue on with our next line stow as though it wasn't even there and it will still pay out in the same orderly fashion. So I'm bringing my bite of line to the edge of the bag and bringing the stow to the bite, not the bite to the stow. And do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to create my bite of line at the end of the bag, not over the bag, flopping down the side. End of the bag. Bringing my stow to my bite. Inboard. You'll notice that these outboard stows have about a 45 degree angle on the attachment points. That's good. We want the stows as close inboard as we can get them because the closer inboard they are, the less oscillation we're going to have of the bag when it comes off of our back. If the stows are out here on the edge of the bag, you're going to have a much greater oscillation as they release rather than having them release inboard closer to the center of gravity of the bag. I'm going to go ahead, make my next stow, end of the bag, bring in the stow, excuse me, next bite, bring the stow into the bite, double wrap, remove my thumb, give it a gentle grip to straighten it out. Same thing on the other side. Again, the bite of line to the edge of the bag. I bring my stow into the bite, gently squeezing the stow so that, or the bite of line so that it's nice and smooth. And I'll keep doing this down till the manual says 24 inches of excess line. Really, you can go 24 to 12, 18 to 24 is ideal uh, in terms of your target length. So, I can do one more line still here. And again, I acknowledge I'm working in a vacuum here, working in a bubble, so to speak. I've got zero time factor and it's air conditioned. So I have the time, the attention to detail, if you will, to really um, operate slowly and smoothly and deliberately. But that doesn't mean this can't happen as well in a fast paced environment. It just takes a little bit of time, practice and energy. Now in theory, I could do one more stow, but now I'm underneath um, 12 inches or so, maybe a little bit over, and it's really close to the, the minimum. So I'm just gonna leave that last stow there for now. Um, I think here we're probably just at 24 inches here, two feet of excess line as the manual would dictate. So that is how we arrive at clean, smooth locking stoves.